Well, good evening. Lord, ain't it great to be in the house of the Lord tonight to celebrate the Lord in a uh, marvelous way of bringing in a new year? No other way, no, no other place I'd rather be than in the house of the Lord celebrating why we're all here to begin with is because of the Lord. Well, I'm just going to bring forth my, um, well, what I was supposed to done this morning, what the Lord had gave me for this church and for myself personally for 2024. And what he gave me was unity. He said, it's time for my people to get back to where they need to be, and that is into unity. And I said, well, yes, Lord, it is. We have, a lot of us have lost our way. But he says, it doesn't matter how long you've been away, because I'm still here. I never change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So just, it's fixing to be a new year, a new beginning. He said, dust yourself off. I don't care how many times you fall. You can fall 77 times in a day. It doesn't matter. You can fall a million. It doesn't matter because I never change. I am the Lord. I am your helper. But he had gave me a few verses. I'm just going to read a few little verses, what he had given me. And what, the first one is John 17 and 23. It says, I in them, you and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Then he gave me another one. It's Psalms 133 and 1. It says, How good and pleasant it, it is when God's people live together in unity. And then he gave me another one. I'm going to change it up a little bit. He, he's gave me a lot, but I ain't going to get through all of them. But <laughs> it's Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. It says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up uni in unity. We will reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And that's what he wants us. He wants us to come into unity and be in one as he is in one. He is the, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but they are three in one. They are, the, they are the trinity, and that's what he wants us all to be in. He wants us to be in unity and love because he, he is love, and he is what brings us together. But I'm going to go out in prayer. We have a lot that is sick um, that is among us, and there's, it's just been a lot this year. A lot of has been through a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations, a lot of burdens we have carried. But how good it is to carry burdens because God says, cast them upon me because I care for you. So that's what we need to do. We need to, this is a new year, a new beginning, and a few hours. And it is time for us to cast our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. He will carry everything that we can't carry. That's why he says, cast them upon me. Because when the burdens are too heavy... He says, that's why I'm here. I will carry your burden. But when we carry others' burdens, he says, pray one for another so you shall be blessed. So when we carry other burdens, sometimes it's really a growing, a growth for us. Because we are learning. And we, when we go through trials and tribulations, it's for a reason and for a purpose. For us to carry what we need to carry so we can help somebody else that's going through what we've already been through. So I thank God for every trial, every storm, everything that I have walked through. Because I know when I get through the other end, I know that I can walk out and keep walking because I can help somebody else to keep walking by faith. Because God says faith is substance of something hoped for, evidence of things not seen. And I, I thank him for that. But I'm going to go open up in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we give this night to you. We give every breath to you, every heartbeat to you, Father God, because you are the reason for the season. You are the reason that we are here. And God, we cast all of our cares upon you, Father God. And for Lord, everyone that is sick and afflicted with any disease, any sickness that might be touching them, God, we plead the blood of Jesus upon them, Father. And for my uncle Gary that is hurting in his foot, God, Lord, we just ask you to touch that foot and let him walk father let him walk and not hurt and just like we have others that are hurting and aching in their body god we just plead the blood of jesus upon them because god you said that nothing could penetrate through the blood of jesus christ so satan we are telling you right now that the blood of jesus is against you 
For we carry the blood of Jesus in us. And we just thank you, Lord, for everything, Father, that you have done and that you're going to do tonight, God. For we want to praise you and glorify you and honor you, Father, for tonight and every night and every second and every hour and every minute belongs to you, Lord. And we thank you for it, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you for everything that's going to come forth tonight. We thank you for the word that's going to come forth, God. We thank you for the breakthroughs that's going to happen tonight. We thank you for the deliverance that's going to happen tonight. We thank you for the healings that's going to happen tonight, Father God. And we thank you that we are going to walk fresh and new into the new beginning of the new year, Father God, that you give us, Lord. We thank you, Father, for every breath and every heartbeat that you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, because you don't have to give it to us, Lord. You don't have to give us anything, but we thank you for everything that you do give us, God. But, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you to you, Lord, for tonight, Father, and to, for everything. For it's in Jesus' name I ask. Amen. All right. Come on, Pastor John. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, I looked at my phone a while ago, and uh, it said that I was in a loud environment. Well, come on. Well, glory, amen. It said I was in a loud environment, amen. I got, Amen. Come on. I got that out set on my phone because I work out in the farm and, and I just played with it and I put it on there and it stayed, amen. But it, it said a uh, loud environment, amen. So we got to tone it down just a little bit, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, I th- uh, Pastor, Pastor uh, Martha said that it's going to be easy, but you know what? Thank you, Praise Team. Thank you, Brother Kenny. Sister, Praise Team, plow up that fallow ground, amen. amen. Send up Judah first. That... Our victory is in our praise, church. Can I say that? Victory, hey, your, 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 your victory and your, uh, your confidence and, and, and your ability to get through and to get to where you're going, amen, is in your praise, amen. Come on now. That's where it's at. That's where it's at first. That's where it starts, amen. It's got to start in your praise, amen. That's where our victory is at. Tonight, yesterday, Whenever, amen, our victory is in our praise. But I thank you guys. Thank you for giving me the opportunity once again here at New Emmanuel Church, amen. Praise God for that. I thank Pastor Martha and the leaders, amen, here at New Emmanuel. The te- the, what a blessing to have the in-house ministers, amen. Hey, I'm here to tell you, there, there's, there's churches and there's, there's ministers and there's congregations that they, they keep a tight grip right here, my friend. Right here, amen. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Look, pastor and the leaders here, they've got to they've take care of this pulpit, this, this, saint, this altar up here, right? got to be done and decent and in order, amen, according to the Lord. You can't just let anybody come up here, amen. But what a blessing to have the in-house ministers, amen, come up beside Pastor Joe and Pastor Martha, amen, and all the leaders. What a blessing. What a blessing. I've, I've told, you know, me and Reese and I have been in uh, leadership since ni- 1999, and, and I've been involved with ministers and preachers and, and, and leadership and just in the middle of every little thing that goes on in the church, amen. And, and the pa- they have to know what goes on, but I mean, it's just like they couldn't concentrate on bringing the word forth because they was always in. Let, let your church and let your leaders and let the people that... Go- hey, listen, God, ta- God speaks to us, amen. If He can speak to a donkey, He can speak to a chicken farmer, amen. Come on now, amen. If He can speak to a donkey, He can speak to just an old country boy, right, that wears blue jeans and overalls and Carhartt, amen. Amen. I thank you for the words and the teaching. And the, I'm, just, I'm just honoring the church here at New Emmanuel tonight. Amen. The Bible says to give honor where honor is due over in Romans 13 and 7. Amen. I honor you guys tonight. Pastor Martha, Pastor Joy, the leaders and the teachers, the ch- uh, Charlie and Miss De- I mean the, the youth and the children, all the ones that work behind the scenes. Amen. The us, the ones cleaning the... Hey, I started out in the, in the, ba- in the bathroom. Amen. I started out in the bathroom, amen. If you want to get, you, Pastor wants somebody to come forward, amen. Well, come on forward. We got some, we, here's where we want you to start at, amen. I'm not telling you to do that, amen. But that's where I started, amen. So I, I honor you guys behind the scenes, amen. Amen and amen. 
and we're moving on. We're just going to move on in the Lord. I went back and I told Pastor Joy, I said, just hold that song to the end, amen. Just hold that song to the end, amen. We just got to get busy and we got to move on with God's Word tonight, amen. Listen, Philippians 3 and cha- uh, 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 Philippians chapter 3, amen. Philippians, I told my wife, I said, you know, man, I'm ready to go. I didn't, we ate an, uh, uh, we, you know, I th- thank you guys for the invite today, but then Reese and I got to talk and we decided we'd, we'd head on back and uh, I just kind of got, I kind of got anxious and I was ready to go, amen. I mean, I was, re- I was ready for that checkered flag to get hammered down, amen. I told my wife, I said, you, gonna ha- you may have to slow me down tonight, amen. I told my wife, I said, you may have to slow me down a little bit, amen. So Philippians, we're going to be in Philippians chapter 3, amen. So, uh, y'all don't fall asleep on me, amen? I yawned a couple times over there, and I said, the devil is a lie, amen? <laughs> I'm, glad I, I'm glad I didn't eat a late, uh, a late or an early supper, amen? And get that lethargic spirit, amen? But listen, you got your Bibles. You, if, you, uh, if you're in Ch- uh, Philippians chapter 3, say amen. amen. Verses 12 through 14. Now listen, the Bible tells us right here and teaches us, not, this is Paul, not that I've already, att- somebody say already, not that I've already attained it or am already perfected. Somebody say, but. but. I press on. Somebody say, press on. Yeah. You got, church, we got to be pressing on. We got to be busy about God's business. Amen. The Bible teaches us over the New Testament, amen, that somebody that looks back, that puts their hands to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. We got to be pressing on toward that call, amen, that's on our life. Amen. We heard this morning the ministers and the teachers, amen, that brought those words forth, amen, the words, the unity came forth tonight, the other words, those key words, amen, uh, th- those got to come forth, amen, but we got to do something, sister, to receive that, amen, and to walk in that anointing, amen, we can't just sit on the pews and we just can't be a pew sitter and we can't just come, come on, sister, we can't just come to church, amen, and expect these words that get that got spoken this morning, amen, to come forth in our life, amen, we got to do something too, amen. Amen and amen. We got to do something to receive that, right? We just can't act any old way and we just can't be just any old Christian, amen, and just come come on, sister, and just come to church filling up the pews, amen. If we're going to receive the blessings of the Lord, we got to do something, amen. God says, I will if you will, amen. Amen and amen. Jesus Christ didn't carry that cross up Golgotha Hill for nothing, amen. Mm. I'm moving on, amen. We got to press on. Put our hand to the plow, amen. We, the, yesterday's gone. We're going to play that song at the end uh, of the service, the altar song at the end, uh, Breathe On Me, amen. And yesterday's gone, amen. Nothing we can do about yesterday. We've messed up. I've messed up. Others have messed up, amen. We've made mistakes. We've done some things we should not have done, amen. We went here. We went there, amen. We got healed up, amen. We got haughty. We got nasty, amen, with somebody, amen. We got, might have got a little bit of road rage, amen. Hey, this old world, hey, it's a cruel and evil world out there. I, just, I got cussed out two days ago and I had to preach, amen. So, I, hey, Brother Kenny, sis, uh, sister, I knew it was going to be a good service tonight because I got cussed out this week, amen. <laughs> no, it wasn't her. <laughs> hey, 35 years, we've done way past that, amen. You, you learn to forgive and forget, amen. You just, we're just moving on, amen. I'll eat a ham sandwich in a minute, don't worry. <laughs> when you're 35 years old, Raymond noodles taste pretty good with a peanut, with a PB&J. Raymond noodles taste pretty good, I'm here to tell you. Amen. Not starting no argument over nothing to eat. Amen. I need to go on a diet anyway. I need to lose some weight. Amen. But we got to be pressing on, church. We got to be. We got to be busy about God's business, right? We, you know, we can't. We can't just be just a lethar- lethargic Christian. Amen. We can't be idle. Amen. What happens? Idle hands bring in the evil, uh, 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 evil work. Amen. Idle hands make way. Amen. We got to be busy about. God. We got to press on. Goes on to say that I that I may somebody say I. I 
that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Amen. Remember what I said to me? Jesus Christ didn't go and take it to the cross, amen, for no reason. Amen. He done it for me, that mercy, amen, and that grace, amen. Amen and amen. Verse 13 says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended it yet, but one thing I do, somebody say forgetting. Forgetting those things which are behind and doing what? And reaching forward. Somebody say reaching forward. To those things which are ahead. Amen. And I press toward. There's that word press again. Again, Amen. There's another key word for the church, sister. Press. Unity. Press. Press on. Amen. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call. Amen. You hear that upward call. Amen. Got to be climbing that Christian ladder, amen, step by step. Uh, the Christian, the, the, the church and the church as a whole wants so much from God right now, I believe, amen. But we got to do something to get it, amen. We got to fast. We got to pray, amen. We got to be busy, amen. Come on now. This old world, man, gets us caught the technology, amen. And the, the entertainment in this world now, just I mean, it's like a vacuum. It just... It sucks us in, amen. It, can, it sucks the best of us in, amen. We got to push that stuff out. We got to push it back, amen. Amen and amen. We got to press on toward that goal, amen, that God's got for us, amen. Amen and amen. Somebody say, let it go. Mm. You know, I was born in, I was told uh, Pastor Joy that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a D-Day baby. I was born on June the 6th, amen. Some of my, some of my uh, Army, Army uh, guys in the Christian faith and my Marine buddies, amen, they know my birthday is June the 6th, uh, so they call me a D-Day baby, amen. So uh, I grew up uh, in, in, the, in the early 70s. I was born in 1970, so, uh, so I'm a Sylvester Stallone he, he, he's my icon, amen. He's not my idol. But back then, growing up through the 80s, I mean, if you didn't have a Rambo knife when you was 12, 10, 12 years old, amen, you, I mean, you wasn't living, amen, with the compass on top of it and the matches and the, and the string and the wire, amen. If you didn't have a Rambo knife, you wasn't nobody, man. Where you been? Amen. You been in a hole or something, Amen. So I'm a Sylvester. I like his. I like his movies a lot. He's all, the underdog, Amen. I can relate to that, Amen. Can't watch it now, Amen. I can't watch those movies today, Amen, because of what I'm pressing on. If it's got an R bite, hey, listen. If you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on the bunny trail just a minute if I can, sister. If you go to a theater and you're sitting in the theater and and you and, and you're and, and the Holy Spirit, you get agitated. You know what you need to do? You better. You ought to get up and you ought to walk out. You ought to eat that ten or twelve dollars, Amen, and walk out of that. It's not the movie, Amen. So much nowadays, it's the trailers. It's the pre. It's what you watch before you get to the G movie, Amen. Well, I've walked out of them. Forget the 12. You, I don't even want a refund. You can have it. Amen. Come on now. I'm moving on. But I can't watch those movies today. Amen. Because why? Because I want more of God. Amen. That hinders the Holy Spirit. Amen. We trample that blood. Amen. That mercy. But anyway, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Sylvester Stallone uh, guru, I guess, and uh, I, I wa- grew up watching uh, his movies, rock all the Rocky movies and the Rambo movies. Amen, R- amen. You watch anybody watch Rambo? 1982. Amen. I got some in the house. Amen. Well, I'll know John Rambo. Let me give you just a just a quick illustration, right? Quick, kind of. It didn't prompt the message, but when I thought about the message, I thought about that. The one scene in the Rambo movie. John Rambo, he was a Vietnam vet and a drifter passing through a small Washington town looking for something to eat. The local sheriff intercepts Rambo and drives him out of town. Uh, Rambo immediately returns, but is arrested and met with intolerance and brutality by the sheriff's department and his, and, and his uh, officers. Amen. When the sheriff and his deputies restrain and try to shave Rambo, he has flashbacks. Amen. He has a flashback from being a prisoner of war. Amen. And then all of a sudden he unleashes that Rambo fury. Amen. On the sheriff and his deputies. Amen. And, uh, and of course, you know, he, he whoops him and he escapes. And uh, he heads up to the mountains, you know, in which a massive manhunt is underway. 
Rambo subdues several of the officers that go after him. He's, he cripples them and nearly uh, kills them, wounds them per se. He then captures a sheriff, amen, just for a moment with his famous Rambo knife at the sheriff's throat. Amen. He tells the sheriff, let it go. He tells the sheriff to let it go. Amen. <laughs> of course, the sheriff doesn't listen, and the town suffers because the sheriff wouldn't let it go. Amen. That would preach. We don't listen to the, come on now. If we don't listen to the word, let those things go, amen. Let what God's telling us to let go, amen, for our good, amen, for God's glory, for our good, amen. Let it go. But God, let it go. Amen. We get stubborn, amen. We get disobedient, we, disobedient, amen. We know what happens to disobedience, amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice, amen. You can do everything in the world that lines up that the church tells you, amen. All the, uh, the sacrifices, bringing in your tithe and offering, amen, being committed, amen. But obedience is better than sacrifice, amen. Being obedient to God's word and God's will for your life, amen, is the best thing you can do for your Christian walk, amen. Amen and amen. I got a couple of uh, texts I want to compare uh, tonight to kind of relate. I mean, the, the, the story, the, the Bible is full of stories. I mean, Joseph, I mean, just think about the story of Joseph and his brothers and his families. I mean, he just kept walking and staying focused on God, amen. He, Joseph was one. He just let it go, amen, because he knew what it was, and he ended up saving his whole family, amen. You think about Joseph. Amen. It, we all can relate to the story of Joseph and the life of Joseph. Amen. Our family and our friends and our relatives. Amen. Coming against us. Amen. And doing something. To our, but you know, I want to talk for just a second about Cain uh, kills Abel. Amen. And then, we, then we're going to change gears for a minute. Amen. I drive manual trucks all the time. Amen. So we're going to change gears. Amen. And then we're going to flip that over. Amen. And, and, and kind of lean on the good side. Amen. But, uh, but over in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 4. Uh, if you want to turn there, you can. Uh, in Genesis chapter 4, and it's verses three, uh, 3 through 10, and I may or may not read all that. Y'all still with me now? Y'all ain't going to sleep yet, are you? We still got... Yeah, we still got... We got a little while. Amen. Preach on, brother said. Preach on. It's been good tonight in God's house. Amen. Sister said, I wrote it down. I had it in my notes. No place I'd rather be tonight, amen, than in God's house, amen. Back in the day, I, I'd been down at O'Malley's in Athens, amen. Amen. Y'all remember O'Malley's? Are you old enough to remember O'Malley's? Some of you may be too old to remember O'Malley's, amen. But are you old enough to remember O'Malley's? The local juke joint down the street. What was the one out here on Highway 8 out of Winder? Cadillac. Is that what it was? Well, yeah, I say, brother knows, Amen. No place I'd rather be, amen, than in God's house. Because at one time, I was at one of those places, amen. Been at one of those places, amen. Thank God. No place I'd rather be, thank you, sister, than in God's house, amen. <laughs> Woo! God is good, amen. Man. We're going to be victorious, church. Hey, listen, you can be victorious, man. We can be victorious, Amen. Not going to be exempt. Not going to be exempt from trials, tribulations, circumstances in your life. Amen. We all, the pastors and the preachers are not exempt. Matter of fact, they may get hit more. Who else got cussed out two days ago? Anybody else get cussed out two days ago? All right then. Amen. Just grin and bear it. Amen. That's all I can tell you to do. Amen. And God's working on me. He's brought me a long way, amen. I got a testimony that I'm going to tell when God releases me to tell the testimony, amen. Not everybody's heard it. My wife has heard it. And some of my family has heard it. But not everybody in my family has heard it because they won't be able to handle it. Mm. I felt that. Who was that? I felt that, sister, brother. Who that? Mm. So God's working on me too, amen. Because there was a time back in the day, if you cussed me out, I watched Rambo. I mean, that's where I lived, amen. It, it was on. I mean, the boxing gloves were coming off. 
Amen. I love it. I love, I love Rocky. You knocked him down now. I want you to try knocking me down. Amen. That's where I lived. Amen. God's working on me. Amen. I'm letting that stuff go. Amen. I got to get rid of that stuff. Got to get, got, you got to cut that, those calluses off, man. You got to get the knife out. Amen. Iron sharpens iron. You got to get rid of that junk. Amen. You got to, that's got to be, got to be pruned off, right, sister? It's got to be, you got, you got to cut that stuff and you got to, we got to cut that mess. It's called mess. Amen. It's a bunch of junk. Amen. We got to get that junk out of our life, amen. Why? To, to have that upward call, amen, to be pressing on toward that upward call of God, amen. We can't, we can't, you, God, hey, listen to me. The word sanctification, and I'm going there here in a minute, the word sanctification is a dirty word in the church, amen. Sister, it's, it's a bad word in the church nowadays, amen. Y'all still with me? Genesis chapter 3. Cain murders, murders Abel. Amen. Verse 5. But God did not respect Cain and his offering, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. See, right then, Cain had an opportunity. Amen. Right then, Cain could have changed that situation, could have changed that circumstance. Amen. That's why it's so critical, church. We've got to constantly be walking in holiness. Amen. We've got to constantly be walking. We've got to stay at the foot of the cross. Amen. At the, it, find me at the feet of Jesus. Amen. That's where we've got to live. This, this, this world and this day and time, the world is getting more. I got cussed out this week because it's more and more evil. This person allowed Satan to work in them and work through them. Amen. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. That's why we've got to get rid of that Rambo mentality. Amen. Come on, that's why I got to get rid of that Rambo mentality, amen. Because I don't wrestle with flesh and blood, amen. We wrestle with principalities and powers of the air, amen, and darkness, amen. That's what we wrestle with. How do we fight those battles? We fight them on our knees and at the altar, amen. Because you can't whoop the devil, amen. You can't whoop him, amen. That's up to God, amen. You may think you can, but you can't. He'll beat you up, amen. Because you got, it takes a lot to whoop the devil, eh, man. You think about the seven sons of Sceva, eh, man. They beat them old boys up, didn't they? It takes a lot. Why has your countenance fallen, Lord asked Cain? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you shall rule over it. Somebody say, but you shall rule over it. Amen. Whatever comes in, whatever circumstance or situation arise in our, our life, we can rule over it. We have authority. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Greater is he that's in me than he that, uh, that is in the world. Amen. God is greater in me. Amen. We have the power. Amen. We have the power to take authority over that, amen, to cast down, amen, all that junk, amen, and, and to, but we got, we got to live, what, what's, what, what is our first response, amen? That, 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 that tells and shows where you live, whatever your first, come on now, my hand's up, church. I mean, I have, I have a hard, and I'm doing some confessing, I, I have a hard time if you blow your horn at me, Amen. <laughs> Because I'm thinking, okay, you need to take that 15 cents or that 10 cent fuse. You need to get over into your own. Now, this is me thinking. This is why, what I want to tell you. You need to look in your dashboard and, your da and you need to look in your dash and your glove box and your compartment and find your owner's bound to your vehicle, amen. And you need to look at the fuse control page, amen. And you need to find that fuse that controls your horn, amen. And you need to, take, you need to get you a pair of needle nose pliers. You need to pull that little fuse out of that horn, amen. Before that horn gets you in trouble, amen. Come on now. It's the truth. It's the truth. But that's what I want to tell you. Amen. Sister's looking at me. I told my wife I got a shofar. Anybody got a shofar? I got a shofar that I bought a while back and I'm and I, I and I quit learning how to blow it. But I've started back. Amen. I told my wife, I said, I'm going to put it in my truck. Let it go. Let it go. Oh, I am. I'm going to let it go, but I'm going to do it the right way. Amen. <laughs> so I'm going to put this shofar in my truck. What I'm thinking. I probably won't because the Lord won't let me. 
If you blow your horn at me, not, not you, not you, and not you, amen. I drive a flatbed truck, so I'm going to stop when you blow your horn at me, and I'm going to get my shofar out, and I'm going to jump on back of my flatbed truck, and I'm going to blow my shofar at you, amen. And I'm going to look, and I'm going to say, are you done yet? Let it go. But that's, see, that's what I want to do. Because I'll, I'll, my, my wife says, you're crazy. I said, yeah, I know. I'll do that. But see, we, we, don't, we, got, we got to get, I guess radical is a good word. We, we got to get, listen, the, the devil is a worthy adversary, church. The devil is a worthy adversary, amen. We got to push him back. But we got to do it, amen, with the power of God and with authority, amen. And we've got to do it with meekness and humbleness, amen. And we've got to do it the right way, amen. I'm not trying to send a wrong message tonight, Pastor. I'm not trying to send a wrong message tonight, amen. But that's what I want to do. I want to get my shofar out, and I just want to blow it at you, amen. Because I've done a teaching on a shofar, and some of that teaching, when they blow the shofar, in, in, when it's over in Israel, and, so, and, and, and that all goes back to Israel and, and over there with, the, with, with, with that, and uh, when they blow that shofar, it sends a message to the enemy. Mm. When, they, when they blow that so far, that noise goes out across the land. And it sends a message to the enemy. Amen. But see, I can't, because of that so far and that's so powerful, I can't use that out of the flesh. Amen. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And it's desires for you, but you shall overrule it. Amen. Satan, our adversary, the devil, roams to and fro. Amen. You've been to, anybody been to a zoo? You ever watched a lot of dogs that are in kennels and a lot of dogs are in fences? What do they do? They, especially mean dogs, they, they pace that fence. Amen. Look at that's where Satan, when, that, when, that, when, when, we, when we allow things to come in our life and, and, and we, we dabble in this a little bit or, or we don't step the foot of the cross, amen, we we'll allow things to happen, what happens? Then, then what happens is uh, the Satan comes in, amen, he tempts us, amen, and then what happens, we can't, we can't over, we, we get like Cain, right? We can't, we can't, we can't come against it, amen. It, 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 it affects us, right? So we got to live at the foot of the cross. Amen. 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 We're moving on. Somebody say, over yonder is another level. Letting go will release you over yonder to another level. I'm going to say that again. Letting go will release you over yonder to another level. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 22 and verse 5. This is Abraham and Isaac, amen. We all know that Abraham or Isaac was a promised child, amen, from the Lord, amen. It was Abraham's promised child, amen. His firstborn, amen. So what does Abraham do, amen? Abraham gets up early in the morning, Genesis chapter 22, amen. So Abraham, I'm, I'm in verse 3, Genesis 22, verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men, with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. See, sometimes we gotta tell some we gotta we gotta we gotta put some things out. Sometimes we may even have to put someone and some people out of our life, amen. Not 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 being mean to them and not pushing them like a uh, 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 disown them or, or, or black black ball. but you know we got to move on, amen. We got to say, hey, look, I, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to. Separation is the word I'm looking for. Thank you, Lord. Separation, right, church? Sometimes we may have to separate ourselves from certain people, right? So Abraham told his he he, he told his young men, he says, stay here with the donkey. See, they, they wouldn't have messed that up. They say, look here, bud. Hey, man, if we go back and you, hey. Uh, 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 Sarah gonna kill us first, and then she's gonna kill you, man. Well, you ain't no way you taking that boy up on the mountain to sacrifice him, man. See, they messed that up. Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I, somebody say, go yonder. 
the lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering, laid it on Isaac and his son. He took the fire in his hand and the knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham, Abraham said, My son, God will provide him, for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Amen. So the two of them went together. Jehovah Jireh. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand, took his knife to slay his son. See, Abraham was willing to let his first, let his, cho- let his promised son go, amen. Why? To have more of God, amen. Are we willing to let those, those things that we got, we got to let those things go, the things we cherish most, church. Isaac represented, represents to us what, what he represented to Abraham, our, what God gives us, amen. We got to give back to God, right? Amen. But our most, cher- our most cherished possession. Amen. Are we willing to give it to God? And let it go. Amen. So God can take us what? God can take us over yonder to another level. Amen. God can't take us over yonder to another level when we hold on to those things. Amen. We hold on to those things that we love the most. Amen. The dearest the, that are dearest to us. Right? And that can represent. And the, that Isaac in your life can represent whatever it is in your life. Amen. You know, I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about my dad for a minute, but I will because I can't talk about my dad sometimes without crying. And some of you, got, some of you in the house tonight know my dad because y'all know me. Y'all, y'all been around me and some may, some may not. But we, his name was W.H. We call, we call him W.H. Um, and, I, it, and I'm not saying it just because but this man lived closer to the cross and closer to the foot of the cross than any man that I know that ever lived. Because I can't feel his shoes, amen. Because he wouldn't tell you to pull that horn out of that fuse box or that fuse out of that horn box, amen. He just let it roll off his back. Like water rolls off a duck's back, amen. I see my dad get cussed out. A little bitty feller. I'm like, you better be glad I ain't 18 years old, man. I'll tell you what I do. I mean, come on, this is my dad. Seen it. Seen him get cussed out. As a matter of fact, I mean, I started out driving spreader trucks when I was big enough to mash a clutch in before I even got my license. 13, 12 or 13 years old. So we was down at Winterville. Y'all know where Winterville is at? My dad cleaned out a turkey farm down there for a, a, a girl that grew uh, turkeys for Lewis Rich, a, a well-known Farmer down there, a man of integrity and character and a godly man. So we're hauling, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm 13 years old, man. I mean, I'm, I'm like the, like the song a while ago, man. I'm kicking the dirt up, man, you know, the <laughs> dust. I mean, I'm just seeing how fast these trucks will go. So we got to go down this dirt road to the back 40 to spread this on this guy's field. So we go, there's, this is an easement and there's people on the driveway, man. Well, people are always jumping up on the side of the trucks because, you know, they, you know, that's black gold to a lot of farmers, amen. They need that fertilizer, amen. And I've seen that happen to my dad. So this guy, this old, this old timer jumps up on the, on, my, on the side of my, grabs the mirror and jumps up on the running board of the spare truck and cusses me out. Now, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm talking, I'm 12, 13 years old, amen. I'm thinking, okay, you wait till, well, you wait till I get back to the farm. I mean, my dad is, I mean, it's going to be, a, I mean, it, it, it's over for you, man. So what does my dad do? My dad and the guy he's working for goes down to this guy's house. I'm with them. I'm thinking, okay. I mean, I'm like a little bandy chicken, you know. I'm like, all right, man. And my dad, I'm fixing to see side of my dad I ain't seen. Now, this is where my dad lived, church, and this is where we got to live. My dad in this, his name was Mr. Shealy, a godly man still, live, still living, up, way on up in age. Mr. Sheely and my dad went and apologized. Not to me. I, probably, I don't even I may even got in trouble. What'd you do, man? What'd you do, son? My dad and Mr. Sheely went and apologized to this guy. Offered 
to pay money, offered to, he had a garden, that's what the whole fuss was about, we was dusting out his garden with the, with the road dust. Offered to bring him chicken manure for his garden. Offered whatever. Apologize to this guy. I get cussed out. That's where we got to live, church. To have more of God, to go over yonder to that next level, that's where we got to live. I mean, think about that. I mean, I got, I mean, I got, I got an eight, nine-year-old grandson. I mean, I'm pretty, I mean, I'm pretty fond of him. He's, he's my first grandson, amen. I mean, I could imagine some, somebody doing that to him, you know. Man. I see my dad get taken advantage of. He got, I mean, my, people would steal from my dad. The guys that worked for him would steal from my dad. And my dad would call all the pawn shops, amen, and find out where his saw was at, his drills was at, his grinders were at. He'd, my dad would go back and he'd buy them back, amen, and he'd keep them at the farm. They'd get stolen again. Amen. Payne's up here to Winder. Amen. The, other, the one down here uh, off of uh, 82, I guess, on the other side of town. Amen. Dad would go, says, hey, man, you know, the guys, you know, you got this, yeah. And dad would buy it back. Dad would never, and working them the next week, amen. Yeah. It is turning the other cheek, sister. You're right. It is turning the other cheek. Yeah, dad got arrested and locked up. Just shook it off. Didn't try to sue the county. Didn't try to sue the city. This wasn't too long ago. Didn't make a big deal out of it. They dropped the charges. <laughs> I had one guy went down there, though. I mean, he cussed them all out at the jailhouse. If I'd said his name, y'all would know him because he's from Winder. <laughs> he's a well-known guy here in Winder. Yeah, he got, he got on to him pretty hard from what I understand. My dad just shook it off. I actually talked, actually talked to, the, to, to the two guys and kind of gave them some kind of, you know, um, not really preached to them, but kind of just talked to them for a minute. The two guys that arrested my dad and beat him up, sent him on the, I mean, think about that for a minute. I mean, my wife said, and I was, we were in our, I was probably 25. My wife said, I sure am glad you wasn't there when, when Bill got locked up. And I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I wasn't there either because I probably wouldn't be here today. But my dad lived on another level, church. And he got there because he, was, he focused on God. He focused on reaching, pressing on, amen. He lived at the foot of the cross. He walked. See, the Bible teaches us to walk, amen. To walk in the light, to walk, amen. To walk like Christ. And if we walk, that's something we do on a daily basis, right? My dad walked in that, amen. And, and uh, you know, my dad went down almost every Sunday. I remember that Baptist church. He'd come out. We sat about three rows, four rows from the back. He'd come out and he'd come down. Almost every Sunday. He was praying for somebody, praying for himself, amen. That's what it takes. We've got to live at the foot of the cross, amen. We've got to live at the foot of Jesus, amen. See, we've got to let go of that wrong thinking. Amen. We've got to cast down those thoughts. Amen. We've got, we got to let go of that mouth. Somebody say, uh-oh. We've got to let go of that mouth. We've got to let go of our flesh. Amen. We've got to let it go. Cruci the Bible says crucify your flesh daily, right? We've got to let go of control. We've got to let go of unforgiveness. The list goes on hatred, deceitfulness, ill intentions, selfishness. Anger, fear, and the list goes on and on and on. Amen. <clears throat> Hebrews, and I, I'm closing, I'm winding down. Hebrews 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us, somebody say, throw off. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Amen. Let us throw off everything that hinders us. It doesn't say some things. It doesn't say this, that, or the other. Amen. It says, let, us, let us throw off everything that hinders us. Whatever hinders us in our Christian walk. Amen. The Bible teaches that we're to throw that off. Amen. 
We're to do away with it. We're to get rid of it. Amen. And the sin that so easily entangles us. Amen. We get all wrapped up. Amen. We're, the Bible t- teaches that we, we become a slave to sin. Amen. We become a slave to that sin. It owns us, whatever it is, in our life. Amen. You know, this morning, Pastor Martha mentioned, mentioned, Pastor Martha mentioned this morning, empty us out. Amen. Empty us out so we can be filled up. I I brought a junk bucket in here tonight, just as a little illustration. Amen. A junk bucket. This is my junk bucket. I went through the junk mail. At the house. I filled up this whole five gallon, five gallon bucket. Junk mail. It's just junk. It's just, I mean, it's, 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 not, it's nonsense. That represents junk in your life, amen. The bucket represents us, represents a vessel, amen. You see, every morning you can get up, amen, we can carry this bucket of junk around with us all day long, right? Whatever it is, it's junk, there's all kind of junk mail in it represents everything in my life, amen, that entangles me, amen. My mailbox gets full of, of mail, and I get about 10 pieces of good mail and about 50 pieces of junk mail, amen. It entangles my mailbox, amen. Same way in the spiritual, amen. The junk, amen, in this old world gets in us. And it entangles us, amen. See, I can't, I can't put any, I, I can barely put, I can put a little bit of good stuff in here. I can put a little bit of word in this bucket. Amen, a little bit. You guys can see it. I mean, it's pretty full. Got a little weight to it. Amen. So we got, what do we got to do? We got to get rid of all that junk, amen. We got to lay all that junk. We got to just lay it on the altar, amen. We just got to get rid of it, amen. We just whatever it is in your life, the junk that we carry, amen. Look, 2023, I mean, it's out the door, folks. It's over. Amen. Nothing we can do about 2023, amen. Nothing. Bad relationships, job, the list goes on, amen. Something we did wrong, we didn't do right. We messed up here. We messed up there. Amen. We didn't do this right. Forget about it. Amen. Learn from it. We got to let that stuff go. Amen. The Pastor Martha said this morning, we empty us out, God. We got to empty ourselves out. Amen. We got to empty ourselves out to fill us up. And we, and we got to do that by getting, by getting fed, amen. It's been an awesome church service tonight, amen. Awesome church. There's so much entertainment, so, much work, so many places we could have been tonight, amen. We get, church, you, we, to, to live a life in victory and to live a life that's, that God wants us to live according to the Scripture, amen. we got to just about make ourselves go to church, amen. Because when I, when, I, when I was in church, I mean, I come out, I mean, I was at, in, in the womb like Sister uh, Missy over there. I mean, I, I was in church before I was even born. And if I'd acted up in the womb, Daddy would have poked my mom in the side and poked, my, and poked her belly, amen. I mean, he had long arms. Well, there was four of us. I got, I got two sisters and another brother. We were back to back to back, except for my brother was two, three years apart. So we were stair-stepped, Amen. Daddy could reach around mama and get whichever one of us he had to, amen. Yeah, I know. You're right, sister. But we was in church Sunday morning. Amen. We got my dad was my dad was a farmer, self-employed, amen. Worked hard all his life. He made time to go to church on Sunday morning, amen. Had 500 head of cattle and 1,200 acres of land to farm. 500 cattle and that much land to farm, amen. We still went to church on Sunday morning, amen. Sunday night we went to church. We went back to church on Wednesday night. We did. Amen. Then we went to vacation Bible school. Amen. We went to Sunday school. That's how you get good dirt. You 
You know, God's, I mean, we, God's got so much for us, church. Uh, uh, we can walk in those blessings. We can choose. It's all about a choice, church. We can choose where we're going to walk at. How, do we want more of God or do we want? Do we not? If we want more of God, amen, why are we not doing more? Why are we not seeking God more? Amen. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5. The children of Israel were getting ready to cross the Jordan River. But they had to do something, amen. To reach that promised land, they had to get straightened out, right? There was a lot going on in those generations. Was it Brother Joy, Pastor Joy that talked about it this morning? About the children of Israel being disobedient. One of the brothers, anyway, this morning in, in, the, in the teachings. And Joshua said to the people in Joshua chapter 3, uh, chapter 3 and verse 5, and Joshua said to, to the people, sanctify. Somebody say sanctify. sanctify. They, now, they were, all, they, they were already God's chosen people. They were already the children of, uh, of Israel. They made God's chosen people. They still had to sanctify themselves. They still had to get rid of all that junk, amen, that, that was brought through the generations. All that, whatever came through them, amen, through the generations and through the people, amen. They had, to get that, they had to get rid of that junk, amen. We got to sanctify ourselves. He said, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. Somebody say tomorrow. tomorrow. 2024 is right around the corner, amen. Yes. Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Amen. Somebody should be shouting and jumping off the pews right there because God's got some wonders for you, amen, church, tonight, amen. God's got something for us, amen. For 2024, what do we got to do? We got to clean ourselves up, church. We can't get it. Can't we? Can't live 2024 like we lived in 2023 and expect anything more. Amen. We got to sanctify ourselves. The word sanctify is a verb. Amen. It's an action. It's an action word. I love action words in the Bible. Amen. We got to do something. Praise is an action word. Amen. The word sanctify is an action word. Amen. And it, it means to be set apart. Amen. Declare holy, consecrate. Amen. Free from sin, purify. Morally right and acceptable. Consecrate, bless, make holy. <clears throat> Dedicate to God. Joshua basically told the people to divorce themselves from anything that was unclean and to devote themselves wholly to the Lord. Amen. We got to get rid of that stuff. We got to divorce. Amen. There got to be a separation. Amen. To have more of God. To walk in God's, all, all the gifts and callings that are in our life. Amen. If we're going to walk in those gifts and callings and have more of that and for that more of the come, we got, we got to walk. Amen. We got to walk in, in God. Uh, <clears throat> but the word for the new year is sanctify, sister. I believe that it's sanctify. We can't, live, we can't go to the same old place. We can't dabble in the same sin and expect God to bless our life. Amen. Yes. You know, my dad had these prayer journals. He prayed for everybody in Jefferson, Jackson County, and Winder, too, because he knew a lot of people in Winder, I think, I believe. I don't know. The, he's got he had three or four prayer journals, and they're all full of names. Amen. He had, he had names over names and writing sideways and crossways on the pages. Amen. Bless his heart. You know, I'm not real big on New Year's resolutions. Amen. But can I give you seven rules to live by? If y'all want to write these down, I, I probably should have done something a little bit different, but I wasn't sure how the message was going to go. Now, these are rules to live by from, that my dad wrote down as he was living his Christian life. And guess what? They worked for my dad. Amen. There's seven of them, so you got one per day. Amen. Number one, I will try to live by Christ. I will try to live by Christ. Number two, I believe all things will work out for me if I hang on to the end. Amen. 
I believe all things will work out for me if I hang on till the end. If y'all need to get these after service, you're more than welcome. I, I can send them to you as well. Number three, I will never give up as long as I live, and I will not let anyone or anything detour me from my goal. I will never give up as long as I live, and I will not let anyone or anything detour me from my goal. Number four, I will be courageous in the face of odds. What does God tell the people and the children of Israel? And Joshua. Let me find it for a second. Y'all bear with me. While y'all writing those down, number four, I'll be courageous in the face of odds. I know what it says, but I just want to, I don't want to misread it, amen. Be, uh, Joshua, God tells Joshua to tell the people to be strong and have good courage, amen. To be strong and have good courage more than once in those chapters, amen. Number five, I will fight to over, overcome all physical handicaps and setbacks. I will fight to overcome all physical handicaps and setbacks. Number six, I will continually try to accomplish whatever I desire. I will continually try to accomplish whatever I desire. And number seven, I will never surrender to discouragement or despair. I will never surrender to discouragement or despair. Amen. Those are encouraging words. They've helped me over the years. They've helped others in our family. Amen. I just want to pass those on. Since we're going into the new year, it's kind of some of you guys can, can put and apply to your Arsenal, amen, your Christian tool belt, per se, amen. Y'all stand to your feet. I got 15 minutes to spare. You know, we, we're, gonna, we're not going to uh, close without having, uh, you know, an, an altar uh, call, an altar service, amen. Joey's got a, got a song back there. He can play another one if he wants to, uh, Breathe, you know, part of the lyrics in that's yesterday's gone. It's, it's Breathe on Me by Clint Brown. Go ahead, brother, you can play it real much. Breathe on me. You know, I talked about the junk in this bucket right here. We all got junk in our lives. I don't care who you are, where you come from, amen. We got to work out our own salvation. I can't make it to heaven on WH. Amen. I can't make it to heaven on my dad. I got to work out my own salvation. You know, this altar's open tonight. You know, if you, if you got something that you, that, that you need to let go, God's been dealing with you in the past. 2023, you know that you messed up. You messed up again and you messed up again. You can't seem to get past that. I mean, this altar's open. Lay it down, church. I mean, just lay it in my feet. Let, let it go. You can't be free until you let it go, amen. You can't be free. We're going to pray for this sister right here. Come on out, Pastor Mark.